How's it going everyone? Got some major PlayStation news to cover in this video. Marvel Spider-Man 2 getting a new version update 1.003 adding 8 new suits, 4 new suits and 4 legacy suits. On top of that, we'll have some stability fixes, exciting stuff all around. Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be getting a brand new version on June the 18th, a week away. It notes, first we're delighted to fully unveil four new suits created in partnership with Colm Delane, aka Kid Super, and some special guest collaborators. Evenly split between the spider heroes, these are new takes on Spidey suits designed from the ground up by Kid Super, Vinny Jr., Lando Norris, and Rina Sawayama. Check them out along with some notes from each designer. Right off the top, we have the Metro suit designed by Kid Super. Fashion designer Colm Delane, aka Kid Super, created the Metro suit for Miles Morales, which comes with additional variant suit styles, red on black, classic Spidey and teal on purple. Kid Super not only partnered with us to make these suits, but he also worked closely with our special guest to design these suits. Kid Super noted the puffer design you often see in my Kid Super collections and the exclusive original colorway. We came up with designs that felt super original, like something only we could pull off. Then professional football player Vinny Jr. wears his inspiration on his sleeve, a love letter to Brazil, and the beautiful global game of football. The new suit features a design and default colorway reminiscent of both a sporty look for Miles Morales with a black and green, yellow, and blue shader. Of course, this suit also features added styles, red on black, classics, and gold on white. Uh, so that is dropping. Fluoro suit done up by Lando Norris and Kid Super. Motorsports phenom Lando Norris is all about moving fast. Paired with the high-speed action of Marvel Spider-Man 2, Norris's suit reflects the pace, wholly inspired by racing, complete with a helmet and overalls familiar to those who burn rubber across global circuits. The fluoro suit features its own suit styles and with some variants such as a classic color scheme, white on black and pink on blue. The main inspiration for the design was the feeling of speed. I also wanted to incorporate racing elements and materials carbon along with my trademark fluoro color, which you can see throughout the suit. The carbon style effects on the suit is my favorite. And then lastly, we have the Motorik suit, uh, co-designed by Rina Sawayama and Kid Super. This suit looks awesome. Singer, actress, model Rina Sawayama delivers a badass motorbike look to Spidey's locker. Decked out in all leather, the motoric suit gives Peter Parker a revved up design unique from any other in Marvel Spider-Man 2. The suit features other variants as well. A classic color scheme, black and gold and it was noted, I really want to explore my love of fashion while making the suit and what we ended up with I think encapsulates that. It's fun, practical, edgy, and chic. I personally love the metal detailing across the suit. It feels like what I envision as classic Spider-Man, but adds a more rugged feel. It looks a pretty heavy duty and like it would stand up very well in combat. So those are the four new suits. Then you do have legacy suits. You have last stand suit, donning a red leather jacket. The last stand suit is a highly requested fan favorite coming to Marvel Spider-Man 2. Now updated with our suit styles. The last stand suit gets a more classic variant, full black and an Arachno Man inspired yellow and green. Then we have the Into the Spider-Man. Spider-Verse uh, suit for Peter Parker, inspired by Peter B. Parker's design in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The iconic look adds a Spider-Verse flair to Peter Parker's wardrobe. Enable the film style animation mode via visual settings to get an even more authentic film look. You have the animated suit, which looks awesome. Miles gets a little animated. We're adding Miles Morales' animated suit to Marvel Spider-Man 2. This suit is reminiscent of classic cartoons and comics of old. And then you also have the Uptown Pride suit, complete with a gold trim. The Uptown Pride suit is beloved favorite from Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales that's making its way to Spider-Man 2. This time, the Uptown uh, Pride suit gets added colorways, silver trim, black on red, and blue on pink. On top of all of that, we do have stability fixes rolling out for the game. Finally, our latest update brings stability fixes to the game and addresses some player feedback, such as the ability to swap out your parry and traversal abilities from the symbiote to spider arms and vice versa. Uh, this update version 1.003.00 will be available on June 18th, so keep an eye out for it. So... That is available on June the 18th, rolling out with eight new suits for Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 is one of those games that I'm a little bit surprised at uh, how much controversy it does have in terms of some of the elements of the game. I think some people perceive it a certain way. In terms of the actual content in the game and the shortcomings of the game, the actual thing that I hear over and over again is the uh, lacking amount of content for a game that is $70, but... Um, not to compare it to other games, but bringing up other $70 games, Immortals of Avaeum, Callisto Protocol, now those games were gigantic flops, and maybe the expectation level for a Spider-Man 2 is going to be different than, you know, Callisto Protocol and Immortals of Avaeum, but, um, 
you know, I'm of the mindset and people can disagree and I am in a very, very fortunate position where, you know, I can play every game that comes out and for other people, it's about picking and choosing. But uh, most of you guys watching our videos, I feel like have crazy backlogs as it is and the shortage of having games to play and the accessibility of these games, I don't think is that big of a deal. If you want to wait on a sale for a game, absolutely wait on a sale. We advocate for that. But, um, you know, Spider-Man 2, I feel like offers a quality level that's incredibly high that ultimately, if you add more content, can you sustain that quality level? Absolutely. Developers have done that in the past, but I am so for a game that gets straight into the thick of things, all killer, less filler. And what we've seen out of a lot of games in the modern era is that they dilute the content by adding an exorbitant amount of content, overabundance of content to keep you more engaged into the game, to keep you invested into the game, because more than money, the biggest investment is time. And when you have bloated open worlds and you're investing a lot of time into them, you are then more prone to be spending more money on those games. Future DLC content, microtransactions, I think you guys know uh, one publisher I'm talking about that very much employs that strategy and it can be a very effective strategy. We've seen with uh, the Assassin's Creed titles, that's an incredibly effective strategy in modern gaming and trying to make the most amount of money. It makes me sick to my stomach that I know actual people that have spent $10 on the double XP boost in Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the Assassin's Creed titles, but it's a reality. People be spending time, money on time savers and whatnot, and you, you really can't, you know, charge for time savers in a Marvel Spider-Man 2 when the game gets to the thick of things, and I prefer it that way. I can understand people's preference of wanting more content, but I feel like Spider-Man 2 got into the thick of things. The side content, I feel like, was fairly well done, and the main story, that was well done. Could it have been a little longer? Sure, but overall, I really enjoyed the game, and I thought Insomniac delivered a high quality game would i have changed things up narratively absolutely i think they could have gone in a different direction story wise but uh we'll see where the next game goes we'll see where dlc goes if they decide to do that i just think spider-man 2 is a huge w and uh was one of the you know shining points of playstation over the last 16 months and uh i should say over, you know, 2023, 2024, that has been lackluster. I feel like Spider-Man 2 was the one game always rely on Insomniac to, uh, you know, drop a banger when Sony has pretty much nothing. So, yeah, I thought they did a great job as far as that's concerned from a first-party standpoint. Again, ah, Stellar Blade, FF7 Rebirth. Uh, I got it. I'm talking first-party. But uh, that update will be coming June the 18th. A lot of content and, you know, new suits coming. Very exciting stuff that's going to do it for me. And hopefully at some point we do hear about DLC for the game. I don't know if they're going to do DLC. DLC like City That Never Sleeps because remember City That Never Sleeps came out pretty quickly after Spider-Man 2018 initially came out. We're what seven months, eight months removed from the release of Spider-Man 2 and no rumblings about a DLC. We did hear about a potential Marvel's Venom game. We'll see if that comes to fruition but at this point really you're just looking at uh, you know these uh, new suits that are being dropped in the patches. But a uh, big patch coming here on June the 18th. That's going to do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads. And we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.